and gentlemen and welcome to this edition of Water Horse. We're awful glad you guys could join us today. This is the show about the Tennessee Walking Horse. I'm Jim Fuller. I'll be your co-host today and uh, I'm very pleased to have uh, our local expert on Tennessee Walking Horses, Mr. Jerry Williams. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. You're probably not doing much training horses on a day like today though. No, it's pretty wet out there today. It's It's wet and windy in southern middle Tennessee today. Yes, it is. It is that. We've got, we're going to take you back in today's show. We're going to take you back uh, uh, to some of the programs we've done in the past, and one of those is going to be uh, from the 2006 Walking Horse National Celebration, and I think you're going to enjoy that. That was a, uh, an exciting celebration. Yes, uh huh. But some strange things, things happened, yeah, you <laughs> happened exactly, at the end. You're so exactly, anyway. you exactly right. Anyway, folks, stick around. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back right after this message. Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety, and JD Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Seabring and see what being number one is all about. The impact of a meal goes well beyond feeding our bodies. Food can open endless possibilities for people to thrive. Because when people are fed, futures are nourished. Everyone deserves to live a full life. And with your help, together we can end hunger. Join the movement at feedingamerica.org slash act now. Same bloodline, same mother, same father, and here he is. Now this is the offspring. Now Hero is standing at stud at Jerry Williams stable. Yes, that, I'm gonna tell you, that's a, that's a real nice horse. That horse had an injury happen to him in the stall when he was young, um, but now I tell you, got, all, got a lot of talent, that Hero horse does. He's a real nice horse. Welcome back to Water Horse, ladies and gentlemen. Some bad news, Jerry. I understand about uh, some of some of our friends in the Walking Horse business. Yes, yeah, so I would like to, um, for everyone to say a prayer for um, Blaze Bacar. Um, she had an accident, and keep her in your prayers. And Sean Fulton. Bla- Blaze is a real talented horse trainer. You know. Especially being a woman in this business, you know, it's very hard for her, but I mean, she's she's very talented. And, and Blaze has been very, very successful. Yes, she has. She in, in, in this business as well. She had an automobile accident? Yes, she had an automobile accident. Right. And um, Sean Fulton, he worked for Blake Sims, and I mean, reach out to Blake, and he'll tell you how to get a hold of Sean, but I mean, he's pretty sick. I, I want everybody to say a prayer for him. 
And uh, Jerry, uh, a couple of weeks ago, you asked everybody to say some prayers for our, our good friend Jerry Harris, yes, and uh -huh. I'm filling them in for today. Yes. And that must have worked. Yes, he, he's, he's doing, he's doing he's better, doing, doing mm -hmm. much better, and we expect to see him again before too long. Jerry, uh, what, what are you guys doing uh, this time of the year, me and you? Well, right now we just kind of starting on the young horses to get them prepared for the show season. You know, you mm -hmm. have a lot of coats that you started and. You know, a lot of them coming up as two yos, and I mean, now you're getting ready, and you know, the training show will be here in another couple months now. You know, the end of March. Right. You know, and so you try to get them prepared to get ready to show for that first show of the year, and then some of your older horses that you have, you try different shoe jobs on them and stuff like that. So you actually do your training during the off season, pretty mm -hmm. much. You know, show season, and you pretty much doing show season, you just maintain them. You just kind of keeping them exercised. That's it. The the older horses probably don't require as much. Don't work. require much. A lot of times we let them relax and be off. Some of them pull the shoes off of them and turn them out. Let them exercise, mm -hmm. you know, and just kind of relax. Just like anybody else on a vacation, you mm -hmm. know, on older horses. Is it an adjustment for them when when you uh, bring them back out and have to put shoes on them again? Some of them they are, and some of them I tell you, some of them horses love them shoes and you wouldn't believe it but every time you take a horse that you retire and you get ready to go to a horse show and you don't take that horse more he'll run that stall because he wants to, he used to going on that trail and going to perform yeah, right. and stuff but a lot of them horses you know they really like performing and you got these horses that's in the walking on the industry that's 20 22 years old they're still showing yeah they're competing right yeah, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I've, I've, and some of them have actually done quite well to great well you're exactly right on that yeah amazing yes. You know, and it, it, it sort of always seemed to me, and, and of course I'm not the expert that Jerry is, but it seemed like to me some of these horses are, appear to be real competitive and, oh, yeah. and, and they're excited. Oh, they're excited. They, they are very excited. You know, them horses work one way at home, and then when you get to the horse show, that horse is a totally different horse. You can tell he got that competitive atmosphere on him, and he'll look a lot better, and you'd be like, man, you know, here go this horse. And you know, I don't remember him doing this at home, but now at the horse show, he's a lot better, you know. And that's, you know, like that little horse right there. I mean, he's a young horse, and that's how I usually start him off, you know, as babies. And, and like that horse right there, he's almost ready, he another three or four months is ready to go competition. And how old would that horse be right there that you were? That horse right there was 22 months old. 22 months uh -huh. old. Okay, yep. just, uh, just under two years. Yeah, just under two years old. And, and uh, it, it half, you, there is a lot of two-year-old classes. Yeah, they have a lot of two-year-old classes, yes. So, mm -hmm. so uh, how long before they actually get in the ring do you start working with them uh, at what age? Well, by the time you start working with them, you start kind of handling them as 12 months old, kind of getting them used to, you know, somebody touching them and stuff like that. But actually start riding them. I like mine to be pretty much 18, 19 months old before mm -hmm. you kind of ride them and everything. And, you know, and a lot of people think that you just – Throw that shoe on him and you ride. No, you ride that horse barefooted and you get him to learn how to guide and everything else and teach. They're like an athlete. Mm -hmm. You know, you teach him how you work his way up before you even start putting any kind of a shoe or whatever on his foot. I would imagine it, it takes a tremendous amount of patience, though. Oh, yeah, you have to have part patience. Of the, part of the trainer. Yeah, you have to have a lot of patience. You know, you, that's what doing anything. That's just like being a school teacher and mm -hmm. fooling kindergartners. You know, you have to have patience to do it. Everyone can't do this. You know, and that's what you know. And the thing of it is, you have to have a lot of patience and time. Do you, Do you ever find, as a trainer, do you ever find yourself in situations where the owner of the horse wants you to do certain things, and you know that's not right? Yes, <laughs> and you know, and when I get to that point in time, I just tell them they need to move them somewhere else. <laughs> really? You know, if they can't listen to me, then they need to do something else. Right. Different. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's got to. I, I guess maybe the owners have a tendency to be. A little overzealous. Or Sometimes or want they the, get, want that horse. Well, they don't to, have the patience. Yeah. Some of them don't have the patience, and that's what happened to a lot of these horses. Sometimes, you know, a person get too fast and too quick, and don't have the patience. And then when they sell that horse, and that horse look out two or three years down the road, he turned out to be a world champion. Then they made it themselves, but they just had this a little patience that horse. Right. They could still own that horse. Right. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Do Do you? Have I, well, I know you did probably have a feel for how talented those horses are at a young age, like when they're when they're a year old or six months old. You can kind of tell. You have an estimate when they, you know, when you walk and watch them walking in the field out there. But now, 
about time they turn about, you know, when you start riding and put that first little package, you can kind of tell which direction they're going to go. Is they going to pretty much be a riding, trail riding horse or a pleasure horse or a flat shot or a performance horse with pads? But, it, but it's... Uh Whatever they turn out to be, there's always a slot. Uh, slot for them to go. You are you are exactly you are exactly right. Yeah. You are exactly right. I think we got some video that we're supposed to be going to. All right. I think this is going to be uh, some of the um, equine education, education day. Yeah. And I tell you, this is a, a a great thing for people to learn to do to learn about these horses and all that stuff. And I think we need to have more of that around and different states have it so everybody can have a, a chance to realize this stuff. This would be a great thing I would think if you were just getting into it. Yeah, you're getting into it and learning about the horse. Right. I mean, it's, I think we need to try to have more of these and go around in different, like I say, different states and having where people from other places can watch and see the way these horses act. You know, these horses, the Tennessee walking horse is a very docile breed of horse. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you out there breaking these horses and pulling with them, you might break 20 of these horses right here, and you might have three or four out of 20 that might rebuck. Yeah. Where that's, any, not, that's not bad. That's what I'm saying. But any other breed, you might have two or three that won't buck. <laughs> you yeah, know? well, really. <laughs> yeah. You know, but this horse is a very kid-friendly horse. So what do you do when you get one that's bug, wanting to bug? You have just to kinda, get him out, out Well, you just kind of get him out of it and just take your time and work him and just kind of, you know, and, and try to wear him down a little bit and, and try to get him where he won't bug. I try to teach mine not to bug right. and take my time. And when you first get on his back, kind of have a, a point where he knows to turn when you pull on one rein and pull on the other rein, you know, it just, do a lot of groundwork before I even get on the back. I might take two or three weeks of just doing groundwork. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, I, I'm guessing that you've been thrown off. Oh, yes. If career. anybody tell you that he ain't never been thrown off a horse, he ain't never rode that many horses <laughs> in his lifetime. <laughs> but this thing is a very good education. You see all them kids that's there? And oh, yeah. I, I mean, I just wish we can have the, the people to be able to travel to these different states and show the good thing about this horse, instead of everybody seeing the negative thing about this animal. Man, that was a, 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 a really good turnout. Yeah, it was a real good turnout. Picture. And they had all the kids that was there, and they were learning, and they got little packages that they took home, and got a chance to touch a horse, because you wouldn't believe if the kids that's out here, they ain't never been close to a horse in their life. Mm -hmm. A real horse, you know, seen them on TV, but they ain't never been a chance to touch. And you can look at them horses, you know, them a lot of breeding stud horses, stallions, yeah. and everything else, and them horses is there. That, like they the seem to love that attention. Yeah, yeah. They, they love that attention. I mean, right there, they teach them how to go around the barrels. That's kind of like, a, well, going around a bucket, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. But, but they teach them to give them the education about all this stuff going on. And the stick horses, yeah. which, uh, it, it, actually, that's part, if you're not a, a regular watching horse shows, that's part of a lot of the shows. A lot of the shows, yeah. They started the shows off with a stick horse class with little kids. You know, um, I tell a lot of people that this horse or animal is very get, good for kids growing up. Right. You rather for them to be running behind a horse and going to horse shows than doing other things that they can do nowadays. Mm -hmm. Oh, now, absolutely. You know, I mean, it. it it helped raise me up a lot. My dad done a lot with me with these horses, and I've done the same thing with my kids, you know, teaching them about these horses, and, and that's what they like to do. And I mean, it's, and you save me a lot of money in the, in the process. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, and the kids seem to me to develop a, a lot of comradeship with with other kids and yes. cheering for mm -hmm. their friends, and you know, and it's, it, it's, it's a great place to make friends of course but you are exactly right and, and meet different people you know i used to take a lot of horses to these behavior schools mm -hmm. for um bad kids and stuff like that and i tell you when you first get there you think man what i'm doing you know these kids ain't gonna pay attention to this but before the end of the day all of them is focused on that horse yeah and all of them is asking questions and want to touch the horse and, right. and really get into it and i mean i've done a lot of places up in nashville that I took horses up there to the behavior kids, and a lot of 
you know, the people tell me, say, oh, you got to watch this kid here. You know, he's bad. You don't ever know what he do. But at the end of the day, that one that they thought was the worst kid there, he'd be the one that asked more questions and involved in it. Mm -hmm. And they start at a very young age, do they not, Jerry? I mean, I, I guess lead line. You yeah, lead line. Uh -huh. What, two or three years old? Probably. Yeah, they, they start pretty much, they lead line started at three or four years old. That's pretty much when they start showing them. They have the stick horse class. Everybody's showing a little stick horse class, and then mm -hmm. they lead from stick horse to lead line, and then they'll start riding in the back. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that lead line is a perfect thing for for kids to learn how to ride a horse and learn them how to sit up on a horse and how to ride and everything. I I done, done a lot of that. As a matter of fact, me and my little nephew won a world grand championship. No kid. Yeah, mm -hmm, in the lead line class. And a lot of your top riders today. It started off in lead line, and I mean, they, they sit up real well on a horse. But I think this was a good, this is a good thing for, for people to see. She's demonstrating all the parts of a horse and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I, oh, they're getting down in just some detail. Yeah, they're detailed. They're showing, you know, the, the legs and all that stuff. I mean, it's, it's very educational stuff. I mean, it's just, I was so proud to see all this stuff and see all the kids that was involved. You just look at the kids, how involved they are mm -hmm. and want to, you know, learn about this stuff. And some of them probably ain't never seen a horse since then, but they can remember this point. <laughs> You know, you got a lot of kids who might want to grow up to be a veterinarian. Sure. You know, and this, and this helped you. I think this is a wonderful thing. That right there is where they float the teeth and keep the horses where they can eat the food real well, mm -hmm. you know. But, uh, you know, I, kn I knew that, that uh, there were classes such as this, and I think that one horse is sponsored something. You know, yeah, uh-huh. But um, I, I didn't realize they went into so much detail about that, yeah. about that horse. And you learn a lot. You, lo you learn a lot just sitting there just watching and everything. They even talk about how to put the shoes on the horse mm -hmm. and everything. You know, a lot of people don't realize if you don't get an education like that, the first thing you look at something, you'll think it's, you know, it's horrible or something wrong. But now once you get educated on it, then you learn a lot more about it. Yeah, there's a total misunderstanding, of course, about the walking horse's yes. shoes. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear a lot of people who are critical of that, but that's actually not something that hurts the horse oh, at no. all. The, the average person that's against this breed of horse or whatever have never spent the time at a horse born and realizing the truth about it. Right. They only hear what somebody didn't told them. Right. But if you ever, if, you know, I always tell anybody, hey, come anytime to my barn and come and watch and see what goes on. And then you can understand. Yeah, and I have to say that, that in my career with uh, Jerry Harris and, uh, and this show, that I don't think anybody ever said you can't come in my barn. That's right, no. Uh, Even if you just showed up there. No, I mean, that, I mean it, there's been a lot of bad things say, uh, said about the, the horse by people who don't, don't know. And I have to say that in my 20-something years, I've never seen that. Well, bad, you yeah. know, Jim, in, in anything it is, it's bad people and good people. So I'm not going to never say don't mm. ne never happen bad. But in football, any kind of sports, anything, you have good people right. and bad people. And to me, you have to criticize, you have to, the bad people, them the ones that you have to eliminate. Right. And, and you can't eliminate the whole industry. And I think the industry has worked hard to oh, try yeah. to do that. That's right, and they have done it. And that's they why they have that. inspection. A lot of people don't realize before them horses go in that show ring, them horses have been inspected by official to make sure for any lameness, soreness, or whatever on them horses. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We've got more to come right after this. Hello ladies and gentlemen, as you know, 
I have a big passion for the Tennessee Walking Horse, but I also have another passion, and that's for communication systems and saving my customers money. And we've done automobile dealerships, shoe stores, law offices, dentist offices, even the Breeders Association. I have installed systems from California to New York to Florida. And now for a limited time, I am giving three months free service to everybody that signs up for host my calls. And there will be no installation charge. Call me today, 931-581-4411 and see if I can save you money on your communication. The Mona Dean family is proud to announce that the multi-time world champion and world grand champion minor ordeal is now available for breeding at Sugar Creek Breeding Facility for the 2023 spring breeding season. Minor ordeal. Minor ordeal has proven year after year that he is one of the elite champions of all time winning five world grand championships, one world grand championship, and the reserve world grand championship as well. Minor ordeal, a major win here in the two-year-old division, our world grand champion. Make the call to breed to a true champion, minor ordeal, 931-680-0897. Where does your donation to the Humane Society of the United States really go? Their CEO makes more than $450,000. Their top execs make more than $200,000 each. The Humane Society of the United States isn't even affiliated with any local humane societies and only gives about 1% of the money it raises to local pet shelters. So if you want to help homeless pets, give to local shelters. Learn more at humanewatch.org. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, What a Horse, and as promised, we're going to have some video here in just a moment from the uh, 2006 Na Walking Horse yes. National uh, Celebration. Were you even born then? Yes, sir. <laughs> I, I wish I wouldn't. I wish I could say no, I wouldn't, but yeah. Oh, I remember this horse, Victoria's Secret. I tell you, you had a lot of good ones. That was a good mare right there. You know, that's, that mare had done real good in, uh, in the World Grand Championship right. in the reserve. In that. And that's pretty hard for a mare to do. Mm -hmm. To show against all them stud horses. Have we only had one mare that ever won the National Championship? I think they had two, maybe. I think two. it was, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I know we ain't never had the three women that ever won the World Grand right. Championship, the big state class. Right. Yeah. My first dollar, George Ann Pratt. That was a good horse. Was, yeah. I tell you, I like sitting back watching these videos on these horses from back in the days there. Matter of fact, this horse right here, I was working with that horse at um, Dick Peebles Stables. Yeah. When that horse there showed. Heidi McWilliams, uh, the lady has connections. I think Heidi's from Warren County. Yeah, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And the thing of it is sit back and look at all the people that's showing now that's still showing horses. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing, you know, one that's still in his, in his business. That's the, one, that's the neat thing about this uh, industry, I think, is that you can participate in this industry from the time you're probably about two years She's old yeah, till you, you get it. 90, yep. you know, mm -hmm. or, or something. I think we've had people that have shown that have been in their 80s, honestly, yeah. that mm -hmm. I remember. Yeah. Right, she comes in front of the West Side, give her a nice round of applause, make her a victory ride. But now, it's, it's, I like sitting back and watching these videos and stuff like that. George Ann Pratt, give her a nice round of applause. George Ann Pratt, was, she was real good for the video. She's deceased now, but she's... Showed a lot. She showed a lot. Yeah. She was very good for the industry. This horse here is still showing. The Texas Joe Black, they kind of retired him this, I think at the um, middle of this last year, but he was still showing up until last year, year before last, uh -huh. and stuff like that. And 
Kathy Zag, she's deceased too, but she she was real good for the game. Roll the goal of member of this yeah, horse, Bird uh -huh. War. Keep a Swain still in the horse business. He is, yeah, and uh, uh -huh. he's he's a builder out of Georgia. Yeah, uh huh. And told me one time that uh, that he was on the national championship that Georgia had back in the '80s, and he played with uh, on the same team as Horse Walker. Oh, okay. Keep is a real nice guy. He is a real yeah, nice guy. Yeah. NYPD, yeah. this, this was a, a really nice horse. Oh, yeah. Thought. Kenny, he still shows a lot. Um, Kenny's a real nice guy. He... You know, this horse here won a World Ring Championship and padded, performing. Then he won a World Championship with the flat shoes on. So he's no still hiding. Versatile. Versatile, this horse is. Bruce and Robin Donna is still showing. Yeah, they still showing. Mm -hmm. They turned this man to a broom mare, and they and they doing a lot of. Um, she got some pretty good coats out there. And they're, they're saying this is walking ponies. Yeah, walking pony. That's a, 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 um, a size. They have to they have to be 50 inches. Okay. Mm -hmm. And under. Under 15 hands. You got a 50, you got a pony size. And you got 15 to and under. And then you got you know over 15 to. I see. Mm -hmm. It is kind of hard for the little horse to compete with a real big horse. Yeah. You know, it's just about like in a foot race. You yeah. know, it's hard for a little short person right, right. to run against a long legged person. It ain't nothing like making that victory pass around that celebration. Oh, house. I can imagine. I tell you, it ain't. It's, it's a wonderful thing. It's a good, it's a good I mean, feeling. You know, in you know, the celebration, you know, that we're a spotlight ride. Right? Yeah. You know, that's mm -hmm. got to put, give, give you chills. Oh, it give you chills. I tell you, it's, like I said, I've had experience with that, the walking that spotlight ride, you know, and it just give you big chills. Yeah. Cheating Danger and Joe Cotton. Yeah. I don't know if Joe's still training, but he was He's still fooling with horses, isn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's get this great Now, classic horses has to do with age. Is yeah, that uh huh. Right? It's 50 years and old. This horse here is still. He still got, they still riding him a little Isn't bit. Isn't he like at 20, 25? Yeah, he's about age? 25. He's up in yeah. age there. Yeah. Golden Sovereign. Here's a look at your blue ribbon winner. It's 467 Gold Danger. Mark Gilbert is up for Susanna Bourne, front of Ingram, Florida. Well, I, mean, it's... I, had a, I had an owner tell me one time, said, well, I, you know, we don't ever get rid of one. We show them as long as we can, and then they become yard ornaments. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, but like Virginia, we Virginia we Stewart. She that's exactly say, who told yeah. me that, yes. She sold one and got upset about it and went back and bought it back for no, what she that. sold it for, so she and put it back out in the field. Yeah. I 
I also asked another lady owner one time how many horses she owned, and she looked shocked, and she said, well, I've got 25, I think, that I admit to, but I don't <laughs> want to right. talk about right. any of this stuff. I don't think her husband is. Yeah, that's much. right. Howard Hamilton, uh, mm -hmm. is he still training? He's still training. He does a lot of trick horses. He got real good trick horses. Yeah. In the field. yeah. This demanded in KF. Yeah. I love that name. Uh huh. It's a great name. That's, I've seen some wrecks here. Yeah, <laughs> that's a real fun class, though. I like that class, that Five Horns class. And that's a part performance. That's a horse with just a, a pad and a wedge yeah. and an action device. Yeah. Somebody was asking me not only a few days ago about uh, the action device. Uh -huh. Doesn't that hurt the horse? And uh, you know, uh, you might want to comment on. Well, that. no, it don't. You know, you got a lot of watches that weigh more than that horse. It's only six ounces. Right. And you get the average watch that you put on. You know, big gold watches and stuff like that, and it weighs more than six ounces. Absolutely. You know, and it's more of a... And that horse is a lot, and weighs horse, a lot more than you do. You know, these horses weigh from anywhere from nine to 1,500 pounds. Right. You know, and with six ounces on them, I mean, that's not... Yeah. You know, but now nah, it's... And you take care of these horses. I mean, you, you spend more time, a lot of people don't realize, you spend more time uh, docking these horses and taking care of them than you do actually riding them. Right. To make sure there ain't no blemish or no nothing on them at all. Because quite honestly, you mentioned this a moment ago, these horses are inspected numerous times during the course of the show. That's right. So you can't afford to have them. You can't afford to have them, you know. I mean, these horses have it made, they have insurance plans, and just most people don't have a lot of insurance plans like these right. horses. You know, you got a vet to come out there, you got somebody to do their shoes, you got somebody to do their mouth, you got somebody that feed them, brush them, take care of them. Right. So I mean, they, they're they well taken care of. And you think about it, some of these horses are $200,000 horses. Right. So you know, nobody ain't gonna just take no $200,000 horse and just gonna just put it out there and, and abuse it. And that's a good point. Right you know, there. that's what I'm you saying. I like you want to buy a brand new car. You ain't gonna go out there and go mud riding yeah. in it and go do right. trees in it. That's Robin right there. That's a real good horse there. Is Robin still showing? She got hurt, and so she ain't showing, but Bruce is doing a lot of showing. But I think she's gonna start back showing. Yeah. Yes. They moved to Chevyville. They live in Chevyville now. Like I say over and over again, ain't nothing like watching these videos. You, just, you get just excited watching this video and it's in 06. Yeah. And it's now, you know, 2024. And you get Man, just excited watching, cool. yeah. That's watching a while this, ago. I'm watching them videos now. Picture only can show so much, but that video yeah. can bring you right back to it. Right. Roll the gold and spud one. These horses bring a lot of revenue to Tennessee and Chevyville and surrounding towns, Tallahoma. Oh, absolutely. We're doing this celebration right I, here. You know, I, you know, a lot of people in Tallahoma or maybe Lynchburg or, or, or surrounding towns don't realize the economic impact that the, the walking horse business has on their town. That's well. you. You're exactly right.
I mean, because everybody come in and they get the motels, and they rent the motels a year and a half in advance. Yeah. Or whatever. I've seen the difference in between Chevyville and Grove since I've been here, and I moved to Chevyville. I've been coming all my life, but I actually moved to Chevyville in 2000. Mm -hmm. And I was in between now and, and you know, in 2000, I mean, it's growing a whole Oh, yes, it has. George and Pratt again, yes. my first dollar. But now this right here with them lights off and, you, and that spotlight on you, I mean, it, it, I tell you, it's, it's very special. Like they say, all eyes is on you right then. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> When I won the lead line class with my, my little nephew, I got so excited, I turned around, went the wrong way. They had to stop me to go back oh, the other way. Oh, come on, yeah. Gary, you didn't. <laughs> yeah. That was a real good horse there too. She, matter of fact, she was on one of the TV shows there. My seven, one of, you know, you used to have a TV show about turning 16 or whatever. Oh yeah. And, they, and she was on there, and they had, and they gave her a horse for her 16th birthday. No on kidding. That, yeah, they had Tennessee Walker on the Yeah, yeah, I remember that show. That was your name, sir. A sweet 16 or something like we called it. That's got to be a great thrill for those young folks. Yes, it is. Well, that one's in the home oh, car. Cord deal. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes. You know, as again, in the industry like this, you meet so many different people that owns car lots, doctors, lawyers, mm -hmm. and whatever, and you take a person that's that's not well off and be able to afford all this stuff, and you meet these people do the horse business, they can help you out a lot of different things. Sure. Well, especially like if you got doctor's problems or whatever, you can call one of them and ask them, and they can tell yeah. you what you need or what you need to do, you know, right. cars or, you know, lawyer parts or whatever, you know? And I mean, that's what thing this, this walking horse thing is more like a family. Yes, it is, and that's, that's one of the, one of the neat things about it. Yes, yeah, that's right. Because all these owners got some other job. You know, they got a trainer to train these horses, but they got these, but the owners got a job to make this money. Right. And, and, you know, they're, like I said, they're doctors, lawyers, you know, car salesmen mm -hmm. or whatever, you know. Anything in this horse business, if you need, you can pretty much call somebody and they know somebody that's in right. the horse business that can sit you in the right position. Yeah, I was talking on the phone the other day to uh, uh, a gentleman who was an undertaker. Mm -hmm. You know, you know you're going to need that. That's right. You can't help it. I have a good friend of mine, Kirsten Lambert, that she's a, a nurse here at the, in Tallahoma. Mm -hmm. And if I get something wrong or something wrong with my wife or one of my kids, I can call her and tell the symptoms and she can pretty much tell me yeah. what's going on. Yeah. You know?
You know, I don't care how old, like you see right there, it's six and 17 right there. Mm -hmm. When that kid right there, and now is a, she's older now, but when she get up and have grandkids, she can show them this video. Mm -hmm. She won a world grand championship Absolutely. on a horse, you know. And she was a world grand champion rider. And that's something to be proud of. Yeah, it is. I mean, like I say, it's just as much as a football player. If you won the Super Bowl um, 30 years ago, you're going to be proud of that sure. regardless, sure. you know? And I bet as a trainer, when you have a horse out there and, and they win a, a championship, you're tickled to you, death you with tickled that death, well. Especially when you work that horse and you start him from the beginning all the way up. Yeah. Even when you start one and they move to somebody else and you start it, it makes you feel good. Right. And I guess there are people who specialize in start and, numbers. Start, yeah, you was right. You have some people that specialize that you call them coach starters and they, that's all they do is they start coaching and then when they get a certain age they move them to another horse trainer. Right. To, the person to finish it. And you have some, you know, that can do it and start them in and finish them. Right. Back in the days, you pretty much done everything. You start them and finish them. And I mean, I'm talking about pretty much back in the early 80s, late 70s. Yeah. And before then, pretty much everybody started them and they yeah. yeah. But nowadays, you have different divisions. Right. People do. First celebration I can ever remember. The first celebration I was real young because I raised up in the business all my life. Mm -hmm. But the first celebration I can remember watching, sitting down watching the show was was in 1980 in um, Mountain Man. It was Mountain Man. I've heard that with Sammy Day. You know, when you were a kid, you, in between from, you know, I started going back in 1971 to the celebration, but I was a kid and wasn't really paying attention, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff like that, you know. But I mean, actually sitting down and watching and realizing what I was looking at. Benjamin Bowen, I remember that young yes. man. Mm -hmm. He's grown up now. Yeah, he's <laughs> A real, a real good ride. That's the thing, you sit back and you watch these kids grow up in this industry. Mm -hmm. And you figure that kid right there on that horse right there, and, and you know, that horse is very trained to carry him around. Cause that horse could do whatever he wanted to, if he wanted to, and that kid was not strong oh, yeah. enough to stop him. Oh yeah. But he's trained up to do that. That horse, that was a real good horse. That horse was a was an underdog. Nobody never knew nothing about that horse until, that, right. until the celebration come. I think the people was from Kentucky or somewhere like that. Well, well they was from way off. They I remember the horse. horse. I yeah. If I remember correctly, you typically you'll see some horses around celebration time and at the celebration they maybe you hadn't seen them. Yeah, yeah, because they show in a circuit where they was at. Because yeah. back in them days right there, you had a circuit that was in North Carolina, South Carolina, Kentucky, Virginia, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And everybody showed in that area and then when the celebration came, everybody met up right. at the celebration of the show. Walk in Wayland. I don't even remember, didn't even remember we had that class yeah. that time. Uh, and this is how a lot of them start off. Is, you know, you, they fool with them coaches and winglings and get them. And the way you judge this class is the motion that they move in. Whenever yeah. they pick up the back, their front feet, that back foot should be right there in that track or on the side of it. Yeah. In front of it. Yeah. Now, let's take a look at our world 
Do you ever judge shows here? I have judged before. I don't do it. I haven't done it up here, but I done it when yeah. I was in Mississippi and Louisiana and stuff like that. But I'm thinking about getting my judge's license this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jim, I don't know about being a judge because you lose a lot of friends because all your friends want to show in front of you. You can't have but one, one winner. That's a good point, Jerry. So I might not want to do that. Right. Good point. Nathan Mills and his family was very big in them halter coats and stuff. Mm -hmm. Them, the Dodsons. Very big. Yeah, so they actually train them to, to do what they need yeah, to do uh -huh. in that class. It's yeah. not just natural. A lot of it is natural. Yeah. And that's one that wins, but they just kind of help enhance it just a little bit. I see. There's Golden Sovereign, I guess. Uh, somebody else owns Golden, Golden Sovereign. Virginia Stewart owns Virginia, it now. Virginia, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that horse uh, won a lot of... They have. He won a lot with a lot of different people. That horse yeah. has been sold like two different, <coughs> two different times. This Gene Gullet was the first one I ever known that had that horse. Mm -hmm. Mickey McCormick is the one that started it. I'm going to tell you, them some real good videos right there. It is, and it brings back a lot of memories yes, for it me. Does. You know, I've, I've spent several years doing this show and, and uh, haven't been around it in the last couple of years. So, you know, it's kind of brings back oh, some yeah. nice memories. Hey, you know. Especially when i got somebody here that knows what you're talking about and give me the <laughs> commentary <laughs> on, it, on the kind of thing. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break. we got more to come from the 2006 Walking Horse National Celebration right after this. Welcome to where the five to nine more than makes up for the nine to five. To where you check your troubles, along with your coat. And days are made, even at 10 at night. Welcome to the best time you've ever had, since the last time you were here. To old friends, new experiences, and forgotten cares. Welcome to where life moves at the speed of you. Welcome to Sam's Town Tunica Hotel and Gambling Hall by Boyd. Welcome to where you want to be. What's a Tennessee vacation? It starts off like any road trip. And then, boom, adventure and thrills everywhere you look, which happens to be some of the most beautiful scenery in the country. Music here, history there, and all kinds of green in between. Come relax and unwind, or bring the crowd for some stargazing, or stargazing. Whatever you do, come hungry and expect an awesome soundtrack. It's all right here in Tennessee. We're playing your song. For a free vacation guide, visit tnvacation.com. The Tennessee Walking Horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or an obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee Walking Horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect family horse by young and old. Whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee Walking Horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you're on one tomorrow. That's a fact. More of What a Horse coming up. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I wasn't paying attention. It's all Jerry's fault. <laughs> uh, all right, we got more to come here, and uh, we're, we're talking about the 2006 uh, Walking Horse National Celebration, and we're going to show you the final class of the 2006 National Celebration.
I tell you, at this, point time, go ahead. at this point in time, this is when they didn't crown a world champion and they shut the doors. And these were the horses when we had the controversy with the government that they was turning down. They wouldn't let these horses in the show ring. And they didn't, they didn't crown a world grand championship. Right. And these were horses that was contenders that was going to show at the celebration that year. So they're showing in one of the auxiliary rings at the celebration. On the outside of the ring, and they, took, they brought all these horses yeah. out, and, I, and they, they were going to ride these horses out here to show off their horse, because that's what they worked hard for. Right. It's to show this horse here. And I mean, it's just, Is that Russ, Russ, Russ Thompson? Uh -huh. Yeah. So Russ, at one point, had his tuxedo on, ready, yeah, uh, ready, ready to go. And they ready. shut the gates. Yeah. And they didn't, they didn't let a horse go in the ring that state night. And everybody from inside come out. And this way, everybody, that's NYPD right there. Right. I mean, it was a big thing there, I tell you. And, it, I, you know, if I remember correctly, it was something that really needed to happen. Yes. Uh -huh. Because of all the frustration of you've worked hard all, all year long. Yes. Training those horses, and then you don't get the show. You didn't get the show. Now these was the, supposed to be the top ones that was in that class. And you know, I tell you, a lot of people got mixed emotions about this. Um, you had some horses that did get in that they didn't get a chance right. to show. And and these horses here, some of these horses here the ones got turned down. And I and the government just had a that's what they that's what they were in their mindset is to stop it. Right. Or whatever. And listen, listen to that the crowd. crowd. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, they were really yeah. into this. Yes. And, and again, this did not occur in the main ring. It occurred in one of the auxiliary. On the outside, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you see, but look at all the people behind and supporting the people right, right. there riding. That's why I say this walk on business is like a, a family. Right. Or whatever. And those were some good horses. And there were some real good horses. All right, that was an exciting, yep. exciting time. I re actually remember that well. So, um, Russ Thompson, I think, was one of the one of those in the ring there. Yes. And um, and uh, he, he, I forget his horse's name, but he had a, a major contender that year. And I think somebody, at Jer Jerry, talked with Russ. Right? Yeah, right. Jerry, is, uh, Russ is a top horse trainer now. Absolutely. I've been watching him raised up. I've been watching him raised up, and he's a good judge. Right. Yes. Absolutely. So let's go to that interview now. Tell you they, they uh, all the DQ pays past our horses, and then the government wanted to say that they're all out on Star Road. And uh, you know, we work hard, we try to do the right thing. And, and, you know, we showed them all last Saturday, the government checked these horses, everything was fine then, and now, now they want to just upset the horse show. I was real undisappointed, and, and I went to the boys that, that did. There was two or three that got in, and I went to them and said, you know, how y'all feel about it? And they said, uh, you know, if y'all want to show, we're ready for everybody to show. If, if DQP passed your house, you know, but, you know, we can't tell you what to do about the government, you know. And so I, I just led on back to the house. I wasn't going to say nothing or do nothing. And doggone it. Uh, you work a year getting ready for this. You, you do all. Up here last Saturday night, they check you. It, you absolutely try to get better for them to look at you next time. And then you come up here and then you're just no count. You know, you, you, you know. I, I, we all know what we the abused horse should stay out of the And that's I'm right. for that, everybody's for that. And if when you find one that's wrong, an abused horse should stay out of the ring. But a used horse should not. And and we we all know the difference between a used horse and abused horse. We, 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 see, we see young kids and stuff that work hard for the family and stuff, 
and they're not abused. They're used. They're used in their family and used in their way of life and used. But they're not abused kids, you know. They're not abused animals. And, and, but we use animals for, for right. what we want. And I, I just tell you, I, I know Billy the Kid, if you just took him, took his shoes off, throwed him out in pasture, he'll stand out there winning and say, hey, well, let's get back to the barn. There's flies out here, and I don't like it on somebody rubbing on me. And uh, I, I hate a saying, but it, it's it's real unfortunate. This it's, wasn't it's a saying. It's a great horse show. This was a this in, in all all It's been coming on all 10 days. It's, it's something <laughs> that, that must be done. I, I, I don't know why the show was canceled. If I went to my fellow trainers and asked them, you know, the celebration said they was going to take responsibility or what have you. And I went to my fellow trainers and said, hey, do y'all want us to show against you or not? Do you feel like we spoiled product? Do you feel like we spoiled out of the show? And my fellow trainers said, hey, we all know what you've been going through. We've been going through it ourselves. I know why we have said they wouldn't show. And I, you know, I, I, I don't know that. I just know that. That's and, what so the that, I heard that's what they announced over the screen. But I don't know that. They didn't tell me that. They just told me if I want to show those for me. And I, and I told them if I didn't show, I should. I, I think they'll help a bunch of guys. And I made a statement before this show ever come about a month ago. People picking horses over the internet, and I said, hell, I'm just happy to be in there with a great bunch of guys. It's like a World Series. You get to play in it, and then you get to go back home and have fun with one another. And, you know, we go in the ring, but we're hell out of one another. But we're, we're a good team, and, and our, our guys are good guys. And, you know, if one of them needs to ride home tonight, he can go home with me. You know, we, we haul, and we long tires and trucks and everything else. I mean, it's not a... You know, a lot of people think we're dead against one another, and we are in the because that's their job. And, uh, but they all got good horses. Nice good horses. job, you man. I'm proud of it. It's a, it, it, it's, it's a rough night. I hated this happen for the crowd. The crowds are great. The crowd of people follow us every year. I hate it for the celebration. The celebration is the, it's the, it's the World Series, you know. I hate that it happened. I, I love to come. I love the show. But it's been a real stressful week. But Mama said there'd be days like this. If it's easy, everybody would be doing it. Hell, you'd be training horses. <laughs> no, not me, buddy. I tell you, that uh, was a night to remember right there. Yes, it was. Uh, that was 17 years ago. Yes. And, and mm -hmm. uh, it, it was a... a it was a great night in a way. Yes. And it it's, certainly was memorable, to say the least. And uh, uh, again, you know, you, you can imagine the frustration that those people uh, might experience yes. that had trained those horses for years. For and, years and all year long, get ready yeah. for that, and that happened. I mean, and, it gets you upset. And they were dis disqualified, and pretty much for no reason. Yep. You know, uh, because the. the uh, the uh, inspection process at that time was probably even more, more less in, consistent than it is you, today. You are exactly right. So anyway, I guess we're out of time, yes, Jerry. Yes, sir. I, I forget the signal sometimes, <laughs> so you have to remind me, folks. That's it for today's show. Thank you so much for watching Water Horse, uh, Jerry. <laughs>